How did this sweet, softly spoken and doting wife develop a deep harboring bloodlust for her very own husband? I think next time you should bring someone else. This gal may look sweet, but she has a very dark and very sinister side. It's pretty messy, so let's get into it. God, I wish it was Joe in that box. I do too, Bon. I'm Lydia, and this is the complete timeline of Bonnie Swanson. Oh yeah, and guess what? Disney and their blue hair lawyers have started copyright claiming my videos, even though they fall under fair use. So make sure you catch my videos in time before they're forcibly removed by subscribing to the channel. You guys have been so awesome going through this, so thank you and let's get on with the video. Meeting Joe Way before Bonnie became a family gal, she worked as a pole dancer in a strip club. This is where she met her future husband Joe, who burst into the joint with his squad and started arresting everyone in sight. Now, it's not stated why the club was raided, but what is certain is that Joe was utterly bewitched by this dark-haired beauty. And instead of taking her in, he took her on his lap, and she gave him the best lap dance of his life. And the two were madly in love, and for a while were very happy. So happy in fact that they got married and had a son called Kevin. But everything changed for the worst when Joe was shot while undercover and he became a paraplegic and unfortunately their whole world turned upside down. Moving to Quahog The Swanson family moved to Spooner Street right next door to the Griffins and as well as a new house they were now expecting their second child. And despite being bound to the confinements of a wheelchair, it didn't slow Joe down in the least. He was very active and proved to be the most heroic and admirable of the whole bunch and everyone just loved him. And in these early years, Bonnie was his biggest fan as the two appeared to be really happy together. They were basically the yin to each other's yang while Joe was loud and prone to outbursts. Rock that world! Rock that world! Bonnie was calm and collected. Joe thought it was time to move and I can't say no to Joe. <laughs> for the first few seasons, they seemed for the most part to have a healthy relationship, but surprisingly their first real fight occurred when Joe could walk again. In the episode Joe's Walking on Air, Joe feels awful that he can't dance with Bonnie and fears that he's holding her back. So Joe gets an experimental leg transplant and it amazingly works and hallelujah, Joe can walk again. At first, everything is going great, but with his newfound ability to walk, he ditches not only his friends, but also his wife. So the gang do the only thing they can think of and handicap him again. But unsurprisingly, the cop easily kicks their asses leaving it up to Bonnie to shoot him, and annoyingly she misses his spine several times, forcing Joe to shoot himself. So Joe is back in his chair and their relationship is back on course. Until... Susie Swanson Bonnie was pregnant for an impressive 116 episodes, and even Peter picked up on this medical marvel. Okay, first of all, Bonnie, you've been pregnant for like six years, all right? Either have the baby or don't. But bulging Bonnie finally popped in the episode Ocean's Three and a Half. In it, the Swansons welcome baby Susie into the world. And wouldn't you know it, she has a voice of a British thespian. This is Patrick Stewart. How are you liking the program so far? But this happy, happy miracle wouldn't last very long as the hospital's bill bankrupted them and Joe was forced to turn to loan sharks for help. But they were able to pay them back with some help from Lois, who asked her dad for the money to pay for a quote-unquote divorce lawyer. You're joking about that, right? Lois? The Adulterers it was after giving birth to Susie that cracks in Joe's and Bonnie's relationship began to show. She was now unhappy in her marriage and her eye began to wander. While on a trip to Paris with Lois, she confides that she is going to pursue an affair and Lois is shocked to see that she chose another man in a wheelchair. 
Oh, you're serious. I guess she has a type. But before any shenanigans can occur, Joe is made aware and bursts in to win his wife back. And to show his devotion to her, he does the impossible and stands up. Impressive until we see it's Quagmire who is basically operating him. But at least he's trying. But even standing up for his wife couldn't heal their rocky, rocky marriage. Feeling neglected by his wife, Joe cheats on her with a co-worker. And so Bonnie finds out and dumps his butt. I want a divorce! You got it! To win her back, Joe recreates their very first meeting, playing their song Toto's Africa, as he gives her the lap dance of her life. They forgive each other once again, and unfortunately, this is like a band-aid on the freaking Titanic. Their relationship was always going to hit the iceberg. This is because Bonnie later admits to Lois that she secretly has many affairs. It wasn't anything sordid, just some guys I met on the internet. It was also revealed that she is sleeping with her priest. In fact, she's so starved for attention, she makes out with a dog. Yeah, a dog. In the episode The Heartbreak Dog, her neighbours throw her a 46th birthday party. During which, Joe shows videos of their happy old life, compared to her miserable one now. She escapes from the party and breaks down, where she is found by Brian, who tries to comfort her, and the two end up sharing a kiss. With both lost souls feeling unfulfilled in their lives, they soon run away together for a fresh start. But it turns out that the grass isn't always greener. Moneyless and hopeless, they are forced to work in a diner, and it's not too long before they are at each other's throats. But who turns up yet again to save the day? None other than Joe Swanson, who wins her back and takes her home all over again. Haven't we done this a few times already? They five break up, Joe wants to win her back and promises to fix things, only to restart the endless cycle all over again. It's not unrealistic to say that this is common within a lot of unhappy marriages, some of which would be so much happier if the couple part ways for good. Bonnie's Dark Side at this point, there is no strand of love left in their broken marriage. Hey Bonnie, what's a five letter word for marriage? Fraud. Bonnie is fed up with looking after Joe and being his 24 seven carer, and she wants out by any means necessary. One time when Bonnie is out of town, leaving Meg to be Joe's carer, she asks her over the phone if her husband is dead yet. Has Joe died? What? No. She even brought a rickety old house on the edge of a cliff, so Joe would slide right out of the doors and into the sharp rocks below. The growing darkness of her hatred expanding into pure insanity. When Joe became completely paralyzed in one episode, she ruthlessly had her bags packed and was ready to go. I'm leaving Joe and moving to Europe. I didn't sign up for this. And in another time, when she received a text saying that Joe was finally dead, she immediately set fire to the house and walked away with a big smile, swiped across her face. Happy to finally be rid of her husband in an oddly dark and euphoric way. This dark and vindictive side didn't just focus on Joe, Bonnie also had a rivalry with Lois Griffin. And despite being her only friend, they seem to always be in competition with each other. She also broke girl code when shaming Lois for her saucy secret adult star past, even though she herself worked within a similar adult sector. Bonnie's Evolution Bonnie's journey into the dark side has unfortunately come to be expected from this show. As Family Guy goes on, the characters turn meaner, bitter, and more vindictive. Peter basically went from a well-meaning idiot man-child who still loved his family to being a straight-up murderer. Brian went from a flawed but well-meaning man's best friend to a complete douchebag, and I could go on and on. With Bonnie specifically, she went from a normal happy lady to a miserable adulterer. 
But you know what, despite these flaws, at least she's a bit more interesting than she used to be. Talk about a femme fatale. Her only role in the show was to be Joe's pregnant wife, so much so she was just that well past her due date. And aside from her distinctive voice provided by Jennifer Tilly, she didn't leave much of an impression in the early seasons. But I want to know your thoughts on Bonnie. Do you like her? Do you hate her? Would you stick with Joe through thick and thin? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.